All right, so we'll revisit the motivating problem we had at the beginning of this section. Find the area under one arch of the cycloid and also find the arc length of this arch. So let's look at the area. What is the area? Well, it's going to be the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi r of the heights dx. So our usual area formula in terms of an integral. Now in terms of the parameterized curve for this particular example, we've got to put everything in terms of the parameter, which is t. So this is going to be the corresponding t value to x equals 0 is 0. The corresponding t value to x equals 2 pi r, we can read it off the diagram there, it's just 2 pi. The y function is r times 1 minus cos t. And dx, well dx is the derivative of the x function with the dt tacked on the end, so it's the differential there. So that's r times the derivative of t, which is 1, minus the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and dt. So this part here is dx. Okay, and so this becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Well, we got an r squared out front. I get a 1 minus cos t all squared dt. Now we go to work on the integrand and get it into a more appropriate form for finding the antiderivative. So this becomes 1 minus 2 cos t plus cos squared of t dt. So I've just expanded it out. It's no problem integrating the constant 1 or the cosine. The cosine squared is going to cause a bit of an issue, but we know how to integrate cos squared by using one of the double angle formulas for cosine. So cos squared is equal to 1 half plus 1 half cos 2 theta, so this becomes 1 minus 2 cos t plus, and the square becomes a 1 half plus 1 half cos 2 t dt. Okay, so I've just used the fact that we've got this identity that reduces a square down to a cosine which no longer involves a square. So that becomes r squared, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, still working on making the integrand look nice so that we can integrate it, find the antiderivative. So this is 1 plus 1 half, so that's 3 halves minus 2 cos t plus 1 half cos 2 t dt. Okay, now we can find the antiderivative. That's 3 halves t minus, what has a derivative of cosine? That would be sine, so minus 2 sine of t. What has a derivative of cos 2 t? That would be 1 half sine 2 t. So this becomes a quarter out front, sine 2 t and that's from 0 to 2 pi. Now notice the things in the, the, the function that I'm going to evaluate at the limits of integration are sine and sine 2t. When I plug 2 pi into either one of those, they're 0. When I plug 0 into either one of those, they are 0. So really the only thing that survives is the 3 halves t with the 2 plugged into it. So this becomes 3 pi r squared. And so there is our result. So it says that the area under one arch of the cycloid is three times the area of the circle that was used to make the cycloid. That's what we can see from this result here. It's three times pi r squared, and we recognize pi r squared as the area of a circle of radius r. So the area under one arch is three times the circle that was used to make that arch. So what about the arc length? So our arc length is s is the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi r ds, the arc length differential. That's what we're going to integrate. We're going to integrate the arc length differential from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi r. Okay, now I have to put everything in terms of t. So again, x equals 0 corresponded to t equals 0. x equals 2 pi r corresponded to x... Or corresponds to t equals 2 pi. What is our arc length differential ds? That's the square root of the derivative of the x 
function squared plus the derivative of the y function squared dt. Now we figure out what all of these things are. Okay, what is dx dt squared? So scroll back up here. We see that x is r times t minus sine t, so its derivative is r times 1 minus cos t, plus the derivative of the y function squared. What's our y function? It's r times 1 minus cos t, so when I take its derivative, it's really only the cosine that's going to survive. It differentiates to sine, and it would actually differentiate differentiate the negative sign, so the negative will go away, and this becomes an r sine t all squared, and there's our dt. So that's the thing we want to integrate. I've got a factor of an r in each of these terms. I can pull it out of each one of those, they come out as a square. Then I can pull it all the way out of the square root, and it comes out just as a single r. So we're going from 0 to 2 pi. The square root of, I'll expand, expand this 1 minus cos all squared out, and that's a 1 minus 2 cos t plus cos squared of t plus a sine squared of t dt. Again, notice I've already factored the r all the way out to the front, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. I notice that I've got a sine squared plus cos squared. Ah, that's 1, so I can simplify this down even further. This becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, I've got a 1 already, plus another thing that's 1, so it's 2 minus 2 cos t dt. Okay, how do we deal with this now? Well, I can keep going and I can say, well, I've got a common factor of a 2, which I can pull out and therefore get a square root of 2 all the way out front. But I'm going to hold off on factoring out that 2 for a moment, and I'm just going to focus on this bit here. 2 minus 2 cos t. If that was a perfect square, then I could get it to cancel with the square root, and I'd be in good shape because I don't have to worry about integrating something involving a square root. Can I get it to be a perfect square? So let's see. Well, let's notice something. We know that sine squared theta, and we have this identity that says if I've got the square of the sine function, it is 1 half minus 1 half cos 2 theta. That's our double angle identity rewritten in a way that's useful for expressing a square in terms of a trig function of a lower power. Notice if I multiply through this by 4, so 4 sine squared theta is equal to 2 minus 2 cos 2 theta. That looks pretty handy because it says that 2 minus 2 cos 2 theta can be written as a perfect square. So let's keep going. Let's just make a quick substitution here. I'm not interested in my cosine function being 2 theta. I'm interested in my cosine function having an argument of just t. So I'll let theta equal 1 half t. And so that means that we get 4 sine squared of t by 2 is equal to 2 minus 2 cos t. And that is going to be useful for us. Because what it says is that now we can rewrite our integral in this way. The 2 minus 2 cos t could be written as 4 sine squared t over 2 dt. And so now I can take the square root of the 4, that's 2, I'll bring it out front. I can take the square root of the sine squared, and that results in giving me an absolute value of sine t by 2 dt. Do I need the absolute value? Well, we'll have to check. <clears throat> if the sine function of t over 2 is positive on the entire interval from 0 to 2 pi, 
then I don't need the absolute value because it's already positive. If at any point it was negative, then I'd have to sort of break up the interval into multiple integrals and adjust for the sign accordingly. But here I just noticed that the sign of t by 2, as t goes from 0 to 2 pi, that's always positive. It's like the sine function going from an argument of 0 to pi. And we know that it's always positive there. So this would be 2r times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of t by 2 dt. Now we're in a stage where we can integrate it. So all that work was trying to get our integrand down to a form that was easy to integrate. Now we are in a stage where we can easily integrate it. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of t by 2 2, and I better make sure that I have an extra 2 out front. Uh, I needed the 2 out front because when I differentiate this cosine function, I get the 1 half coming out from the derivative of the inside function. So I needed to cancel. And that goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so this is 2r. Uh, well, there's actually, I can factor out that negative 2 as well. And so that becomes a negative 4r and then I get a cosine of pi minus a cosine of 0. And what's cosine of pi minus cosine of 0? Well, cosine of pi is negative 1, cosine of 0 is 1, so that's negative 2, negative 2 times negative 4r is 8r, and so there is our result. That's how long the length of the curve is. It is 8 times the radius of the circle that was used to make that arch. All right. So we'll find that in, in these examples involving arc lengths and surface areas. Because they involve this arc length differential, which involves the square root of the sum of squares, there'll be some manipulations that need to get done to the integrand before we can see how to compute its antiderivative. Let's go ahead and look at the next example.